Hello! My name is Bonnie and this is my channel, A Knitter Obsessed. This is my knitting podcast and if you're new here, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back! This is my fifth episode and I've got quite a few things to go over with you guys. So it's been two weeks since my last episode and I have one finished object for you guys, which I'm wearing. So this is my Ranunculus by Midori Hiroshi. You all probably know and love the Ranunculus by this point. I'm a little late to the game, but I absolutely love this sweater. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, to go into the details for it, so this is knit out of Miss Babs Yet, which is a heavy, uh, heavy lace weight yarn. It is 65% merino and 35% silk, and this is in the color plum. I held one strand throughout. I knit this on size US 7 needles which is quite a few sizes down from what the pattern calls for. It calls for a US 10, uh, but when I tried to gauge swatch for the with the recommended needles, it was not working for this yarn. It just wasn't the fabric that I wanted. So this is incredibly off gauge. I don't remember what my gauge swatch was, what my stitches and rows were, but it was nowhere near what the pattern called for. And so I just adjusted the size that I knit accordingly. And yeah, I absolutely love how this turned out. It is definitely less oversized than what the pattern called for. Um, I will be inserting some footage of me wearing the sweater up here so you can see how it moves when I'm walking around and not just sitting. But yeah, so I would say I knit the size, I've been calling it the five and a half. Um, I stopped my increases in the raglan section almost exactly halfway between the size five and the size six sizes in the pattern. Um, just because I felt like it was going to be good enough. I think I would have been completely fine knitting all the way to the size six. I don't think this is particularly oversized. And so a little bit more room would have been completely fine. But like I said, I am so completely happy with how this turned out. I think it's stunning. Um, I did do, there are two different uh, neckline options in this pattern, um, either the wider neckline or the tighter fitting one. And they use the same number of stitches, but they're just different cast on techniques. And so I did knit the wider cast on, but because my gauge is so tight, it isn't fitting particularly wide. It's fitting a lot more like the tighter one. If you look in the pictures, the wider neckline, it goes like almost all the way out to the shoulders on most of the models, which was, it is a look I really like and I would have loved if that had worked out, but I do think this is also very flattering and very nice. Um, this pattern is interesting in that it has short rows both in the back and on the front, which I've never knit one with short rows on the front before, but the ones on the front help give it this really nice boat neck, which I find really flattering. I think it looks fantastic. Um, and even though it's up closer to my neck, it hasn't been making me feel claustrophobic at all. It just fits great. Like seriously, it's, it's all just so good. Um, and then I also knit the short sleeves. And so the sleeves have no extra ribbing or anything. You just bind off when you split for uh, sleeves and body and they blocked out really nice. They're barely rolling. They just have like a, the tiniest little roll to them, which is really cute. Um, it's definitely a little cropped. I've got about three inches of twisted rib on the hem. Yeah, I think those are all the details, but seriously, such an enjoyable knit. I knit it in about two weeks. Um, the actual timeline, I think it turned out to about two and a half. But that is because I pretty much did everything on this sweater twice. <laughs> so I knit, the first time I knit this, I knit the entire yoke in about two days. And then I made a pretty ridiculous mistake on the raglan increases and ended up ripping the whole thing back and starting over. Which, if you want that whole story, I go into it in a lot of detail in my last podcast episode. Uh, and it's a little too painful to recount again now. So I'm just going to leave that there. You can watch it if you would like. <laughs> and then I knit through the whole body, got through all of the um, ribbing for the hem, and was all excited to cast off. And I did the recommended uh, Lori's Twisty cast off, I think is what it was called, um, as recommended in the pattern. And that was new to me. Uh, the designer had a video linking how to do it, which was a very helpful video, so I followed that. And I think I tend to cast off quite tight naturally, and so I was trying to keep it loose, but it ended up coming out so tight and so like the whole sweater was like nice and loose fitting and then there's like one band around the bottom that was like sucking in on my hips and I was like 
it's not the vibe. It's not what we were going for. So I gave it about a day to sit so I didn't feel sad about the extra work, but then I picked the um, bind off off and I ended up just doing a sewn bind off uh, or a tubular bind off instead. And I'm so much happier with it. I think it's stunning and it just finishes it perfectly. And there's no tightness at the bottom at all. So the ribbon can just sort of lay how it wants to lay. And yeah, could not be happier. I think that was the right call. And then I even had to block part of it twice. So I blocked it pretty dang aggressively because I was trying to open up all the stitches and it blocked out beautifully. I loved it and I put it on and I would accidentally blocked the sleeve. So they had like a really sharp point coming down my arm because I just forgot to pin down parts of the sleeve. And I was like, okay, you know, it's it's interesting. It's not what I was going for. And so I ended up having to spray down the sleeves and re-block those and pin them out. So yeah, this was the sweater of basically repeating every step at least twice. <laughs> that being said, worth it. I think it's a stunner. I can't get over how much I love this. It's, I think, my favorite thing I've ever knit, hands down. It's just, yeah, so excited. Even my husband, he keeps looking at it and just going like, wow, you made that. And like, he's usually, he's very excited about my knitting, but like, I haven't gotten this reaction from him before. So this is a winner. I highly recommend this pattern. It's so, you know, it's definitely in the pictures on um, Ravelry and stuff, a very stylized sweater. She purposely knits them it's very large and very oversized and like, I love the way they look on our models, but I wasn't sure about it. It was not quite my style. And then I got into the pattern and I realized there's so much room for you to play with the gauge, play with the sizing, play with, you know, where you put, you know, different details and stuff. And you can really make it the sweater that you want to make it. And it's such an engaging knit that you kind of want to put in that time and effort. Like it is just so much fun. So highly, highly recommend. I do think if I were going to knit this again, or possibly when I knit this again, I feel like it's just going to happen. I'd love to try it with um, a slightly thicker yarn, more like a fingering, or maybe like a fingering plus a mohair, or I don't know, I don't want to, you know, not like a, a heavy yarn, but like slightly thicker so that I can use the needles recommended in the pattern, um, which would make it a little bit more oversized. Um, I'd also want to make sure I get the wider neckline to actually happen. Uh, someone in the comments on my last video recommended casting on more stitches for the neckline and skipping the first increase round. And so I think if I was knitting an off gauge again, I would look into something like that to really make sure that I get the wider neckline I was going for. Because like I said, I actually really like this neckline, but it was not actually my intention. So, you know, I would probably try and fix that. And then the other thing that I think would look stunning in this pattern is a split hem. So the twisted rib is so nice and flowy and it finishes this pattern so nice. And I could just see a split hem at the bottom being really, really stunning. So I'm kind of thinking I would do that if I did this again. Not that I, I like this hem for this sweater, but I think having one with a split hem would be really cool. That's in the future. Like I said, I'm not planning to like knit another one right now, but like I'm also clearly obviously making plans for my next one, so. It tells you how much I like this pattern. It's a great pattern. So Ranunculus by Midori Hiroshi. Highly recommend. It's amazing. I don't ever want to take this off. It's so comfy and oh, it's the best. I'm so happy. <laughs> but with that being said, this is my only finished object. I didn't make a ton of progress on either of my whips. So this should probably go pretty quick. So Last week, my two whips were my Hue Shift Afghan and my Wishbone sweater, and those are still whips. Um, I didn't make a ton of progress, so I'll start with the Hue Shift Afghan. I was really hoping to finish this uh, section of it for this podcast, because I'm kind of ready to put this in a little bit of a hibernation again. But I want to wait to, you know, walk away from it until I finish this section. I would like to have this completely done, and then you know, walk away for about a month and then come back and hit the next section. But we're not quite there yet. So, but I've got it to here. Let's see if I can get it in the frame. Not quite. <laughs> so last time I believe I was 
I'd have to double check, but I think I was on this square. So I've added six more squares, so not bad. I've got three more squares to go to finish this section. And honestly, I'm very happy with how it's turning out. I think it's, this is a, gonna be a really awesome uh, blanket, but it is just sort of getting to me, the, the square after square. Um, they're a lot of fun, each square, but it does get a little tedious. There are a lot of ends to weave in on this. And so usually what I do is I finish a whole column and then I take the whole thing with me to work and it takes me like about 40 minutes or so to weave in all the ends for a column, you know, distracted at my works at break talking with people. It's not like I'm like really going for it, <laughs> um, but I can get all the ends woven in that one day and it's not a huge deal, but it is a little tedious and a little bit of a pain. Um, and yeah, but I, again, I'm really, really happy with how it's turning out. Um, I don't think my, any break I take isn't going to be that long from it, just enough to make sure I can make it through the whole blanket without losing my mind. <laughs> and also just because I have a lot of things that I want to knit right now and I just want to save a little bit of time for them. But yeah, like I said, I will be finishing those three squares before I do that. So hopefully on the next podcast episode, I'll have the section all the way done. We can see the full first quarter of the gradient up you know, built out, which I'm really excited for because it just keeps looking better and better with every square I add. Uh, this, I've talked about it on several podcast episodes now, but just as a quick refresher, this is knit with Knit Picks Mighty Stitch, which is an 80% acrylic and 20% superwash wool. Um, it is, you know, it came as a kit. I bought the whole kit from Knit Picks together. They sent all the yarns and yeah, absolutely love it. I'll keep you guys updated once I finish this. And yeah, I don't have much more to say about this right now because I've talked about this blanket quite a bit. So we'll leave that there. My other work in progress is my uh, wishbone sweater, which again, I did not get a ton done on. Um, most of my knitting this last time was on the ranunculus and you know redoing the hem and <laughs> all of that. And so, yeah, I didn't get a ton done on my wishbone sweater. I did go to knit night at my local yarn store um, a couple of weeks ago. And this is, I worked on the wishbone sweater there. So most of this progress is from the knit night, but here she is. We're still working on the first sleeve over here. Um, and I did add, sorry, it's a little mess with all the yarn uh, coming off of it. It's a little tangled. Um, but I did add a stitch marker for where I was in the last podcast episode. So I've added that much. So a few repeats on the sleeve. It's getting there. It's ready for its next cable, which yeah, slowly but surely, this is a, a long-term slow project. So I'm not putting too much pressure on it and we're just kind of letting it grow naturally. Um, that being said, I'm hoping to get at least one of the sleeves done soon, just so I can have honestly less balls of yarn hanging off this project because it's just a bit of a nightmare with all the yarn on it right now. Um, but yeah, I've talked, this is another one I've also talked about this sweater a ton, but if you're new here, this is the Wishbone Sweater by Veronica Lindberg, who goes by uh, Kudo Vakika on YouTube. Uh, this is knit with one strand of a sand Niskar and Double Sunday in the color Deep Red, and one strand of knitting for all of Soft Silk Mohair in the color Claret held together. And I am knitting the size small slash medium. Um, and yeah, absolutely, I could not be happier with it. I tried it on actually for the first time a couple of like, probably right after my last podcast episode, so that you know, it had a slightly shorter sleeve, but it pretty much looked just like this. And yeah, it's going to be a stunner. Like it's so far, the sizing looks perfect, especially considering, you know, that all of the cables will obviously open up quite a bit in blocking. Um, but yeah, the size seems fantastic. It's cozy. It's soft. I have no sensitivity to mohair or like not very much of a sensitivity to mohair. And so like none of that bothered me. It just felt soft and warm and amazing. The colors may be a teensy bit high on me but it's like a very dramatic look. And so I'm kind of into it, but 
yeah, it's a, I'm really, really excited for it. This is going to be just an absolute stunner. Um, but yeah, like I said, just been slightly on the back burner the last couple of weeks uh, with my other projects. So, and it's going to really be on the back burner going forward for the next uh, period, which is because, and this is the next thing I need to talk about, we're going to Japan. So <laughs> we are actually headed off to Osaka, Japan uh, in just a few days. And so I've been trying to really plan my knitting for that trip because, you know, it's like a 12 hour flight there, 12 hour flight back. We'll be on the train several times while we're there. You want to make sure I have the appropriate projects. And so as much as I love my wishbone sweater, I don't think that's my travel project. It's very bulky. Um, and it's going to be an amazing winter sweater, but like trying to knit on it, like it doesn't want to like bend or like flow. It, it's very awkward. So probably not good plain knitting. And then same with the huge shift afghan. I'm not really going to take that because it takes so many balls of yarn uh, in different colors. It's, it is not a travel friendly project at all. So I was looking at it and I was like, you know what this means? It means I need to start some new projects. Uh, I'm okay with that. New projects are exciting. So I have two plans. So the first one, I showed this yarn on the last one. So this is not a new acquisition or anything, but I did get a swatch going for it and I do know what I'm going to make with it. So I showed this yarn on my last podcast episode as an acquisition. This is Avon by Miss Babs which is 85% merino wool, 15% silk. It is a fingering weight yarn, so it is 490 yards per 100 grams. And this is in the color Calypso. And last time I showed this, I didn't realize till I was editing the video, but like, this blue's crazy bright, it's so neon. And I was editing the video and I realized it was completely blowing out the color on my camera and <laughs> turning everything around it like super red when I showed the close up view which is wild. It makes me very, it, it's just so much fun. Uh, this yarn is interesting. It's actually a two ply yarn and it's really, really like tightly twisted yarn. So I didn't realize that until I was making the swatch, um, but I'm not upset. Like, I think it looks really cool. It's just interesting. It's a different texture than I was expecting. You know, different texture than I've been, than in the yarns that I have been working with lately. There we go. Couldn't talk for some reason. But I knit up a swatch. This is on size US four needles. I'm just plain stocking it, but like, let's see, it might mess up the color again, but it just looks so nice. And it's so drapey and it's so <laughs> soft. Like seriously, this is so nice. I'm so excited to work with it. And I got it all swatched, uh, super happy with it. 100% going for it. I, I figured out what pattern I want to knit. I'm planning to knit the Noose Light by Elspeth Judith. Um, and I just have all my notes on here. That's what I'm looking at. Um, which is this uh, circular yoke short sleeve top, which has these like different textured, uh, like stripes of different textures going down it. And I just, I think it would be so stunning in this color. I was between this and her, um, I think it's her newest release. I think it's the Somerset 24. I might be saying that wrong. So I will have it up here with the correct name. Um, and I was between the two of those because I think both of them are really pretty. And I think they would both look really nice in this yarn. I think this yarn would really show off the details in those tops. Uh, but I, the gauge is very slightly different and I was hitting the gauge for the new um, light. So I felt like that made my decision for me. It made it easy, just go with that one. That being said, I'm hitting stitch gauge perfectly. Uh, row gauge is pretty wildly off. I am knitting a, a much tighter row gauge than what the pattern calls for, which I do foresee being a bit of a problem in this particular pattern because of the different sections of texture needing to like line up with your yoke separation and stuff. So I'm gonna do some math before I get too far into it. And I'm just going to see, you know, where I can add, you know, an extra row here and there just to make sure that my yoke is the right length at the end. I don't think it'll be that bad. I think it'll just take a teensy bit of planning. Um, 
but yeah super excited for that and I think this would be like peak plain knitting like you get to change your like stripes every now and then so you don't get bored but you know it's not like a crazy construction or anything so you're not going to get overwhelmed either and you get to watch all these you know the colors bright and happy and yeah I'm excited this is I think it's gonna go be really nice that being said this would have been on the needles already because I was already to cast it on last night but I don't know what happened I knit the swatch for this on Wednesday blocked it and everything and then I went to pick up my needles yesterday which would have been Friday so two days later and they were completely gone I have absolutely no idea what happened so I knit um pretty much exclusively on my uh Kaugu uh, Twist Interchangeable set and I love these and they're great and needles that I need like I use more regularly like US 7s and 6s and stuff I own I own multiple tip sets for those ones so that I can have them in multiple projects at the same time which I love I think it's so great and I'm usually so good about taking my tips off and putting them right back after I'm done with them or if they're still like on the cable, I'll leave them with the yarn that I was using. So that, you know, cause obviously I know I'm gonna come right back and use it again. So I'm not gonna undo the needles, but I'll leave everything together. And I swear I have torn my house apart. I do not know what happened to my US fours. They're gone. <laughs> like, the only thing I can figure, and you know, this makes total sense obviously, is that a burglar came in, only stole my US four needles and left everything in my house completely alone. <laughs> You know maybe not but unlikely <laughs> it's uh driving me absolutely up the wall and there's not enough time to get in a new set of us4 tips so what i ended up doing um is actually ordering from my local yarn store they have you know needles in stock and so they obviously don't have you know my interchangeable tips specifically so i ordered a couple i ordered a 16 inch uh circular needle and a 32 inch circular needle in US 4 and I'm gonna go pick those up tomorrow so that I have them for the flight um and it's so funny because I was running around looking for this needle and I was like kind of freaking out and my husband was like do you need me to help me look like what and I'm like no it's fine like I know I'm being really really silly you know it's a knitting needle and he goes no this is a 12 hour flight you need your knitting this is not a small like this is a big deal you're fine and I was like wow he does get it thank you so we've got the solution I'll go pick them up uh tomorrow and it'll be fine and I'll get it cast on um I do like to have a little bit of knitting on the needles when I go through the airport just I don't know in case they're questioning why I have them I don't know why they would I have yarn with them too and I've never had needles get confiscated or anything but I do just it makes me feel better to have the project slightly started so we'll get that on the needles tomorrow and yeah happily knit it on our way to Japan which I am so excited about and I think that top's just gonna be so pretty I'm really I'm really looking forward to it so that's the plan for this this will be a very soon work in progress so and hopefully I'll have a lot of good knitting on it next time I see you because it'll have been being knitted on for quite some time at that point point. and then the other project this is going to count as an acquisition as well because this yarn just came in a couple days ago but i got a little crazy and i ordered my first like heavily variegated yarn and i love it and it's so good but i got these so these are also from miss babs i'm having a bit of a miss babs moment um which i will not apologize for this yarn is amazing but I got, this is Yauza, which is a DK weight, 100% uh, superwash merino wool, which I'm not usually the biggest fan of superwash, but for this project, which I have already started the project, I'll go into it in a second, but I really, really wanted the color saturation that you get with superwash. I wanted something really dark and really saturated, and I, I love this color. I think it's stunning. So it is this really deep, rich blue, just very slight tonal qualities. It, I, I love it, it's so pretty. Um, this is a 
chunky skein. So there's a 560 yards in this. Uh, uh, it's 225 grams. And yeah, it the like I said, I don't own a ball winder, and winding the first ball by hand, like this thing is huge. <laughs> This took so long, my hands were getting like sore by the end of it, which is pretty hilarious. But yeah, so this is the, the base yarn, the DK weight yarn that I'm using. And then this is the mohair that I'm pairing it with. So this is Miss Babs Moon Glow. This is 72% kid silk mohair, or kid mohair and 28% silk. There's 435 yards per 50 grams. And this is the colorway Ziggy Stardust. You can see it's got these beautiful greens and blues and purples, and then this like bright yellow running through it. <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just wanted something a little crazy. I uh, and I've never knit with variegated yarn before, and I just thought that doing it in a mohair would be a really interesting way to play with it. So excited. So the day that this came in, I immediately knit a swatch. And so here's what they look like together. And I just, oh my God, it's so pretty. Like the blue really tones it out in a nice way so that, you know, it's not just bright, but then those yellows and those, you know, brighter pink colors and everything just really pop. As a, I don't know, to me, it's giving like, a little bit of like Lisa Frank vibes, but like if Lisa Frank, you know, the colorful stuff from the 90s, but like if Lisa Frank grew up and was like a very stylish adult, <laughs> um, like, you know, just bright and crazy, but like in this like very sophisticated way almost, like I'm in love with this. I think it's so stunning. And so my plan for this had been to knit the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit. I know I want a cardigan, and I knew I wanted something with like a nice deep V that I could throw on over like a black t-shirt and jeans. Um, and so I was thinking the champagne card again, but when I checked my gauge, my uh, stitch count is pretty dead on, but my row gauge is actually a, quite a bit looser, like I think like four stitches looser than what she has. Which again, I play with row gauge quite a bit but I've never knit a cardigan before. I've never knit anything V-neck. And so like figuring out how to like really control those rates to account for my row gauge was gonna be something new. And then I was looking at the champagne cardigan and the armhole depth on it is quite deep already. It's a very oversized cardigan. Um, and I was worried that with how deep that already was, that yoke, that if I then were was accidentally putting extra length into that with my loose row gauge, that it was going to be even deeper and it was just going to kind of run away from me a little bit. And so I put that on hold. I still would like to knit the champagne cardigan at some point. I think it's stunning. I think it's an absolutely beautiful cardigan. But what I'm actually knitting is the Arthur by Trico Design MCL. So this one is also a deep v-neck cardigan, but this one is a drop shoulder design. Um, the row gauge was pretty much dead on if not like one stitch off from mine but like much closer than what the champagne cardigan was at and yeah I think it's I really like this sweater I think it's just nice and simple and classic looking and I just felt like this yarn in like a really just classic simple like fitting cardigan it's a little boxy a little oversized would just be such a cool piece to own like just think it'd be amazing. So that's the plan. And I actually cast this on last night. So I don't have very much done yet. I've just done the, um, this is the neckline, the back, uh, the back band on the neck. I can't talk, sorry. And then I've picked up stitches along the edge of it. And this is going to be the back panel as it knits down. So we got this started. Um, I'm also planning to take this one on the plane just because I'm so excited about it that I feel like I can't leave it behind. <laughs> so it's going to be a bit to juggle because, and I could use some advice here. So 
for anyone who's knit with really variegated yarn, um, hand dyed yarn like this before, I need some advice. So I know that when you have really variegated yarn like this, you're supposed to alternate skeins as you go to avoid any crazy like color pooling or like crazy shifts when you switch the skeins and all of that stuff, which I plan to do. Um, I didn't do it for like knitting the band for the back collar because it was just such a small like swatch of knitting that I felt like it'd be fine and no one would notice if there was like a very slight, you know, color shift there or something. But I would like to start doing it now that I'm getting more into the body of the sweater. And so to knit the sweater, I needed to buy three skeins of this guy. And so it makes sense to me, you know, alternating skeins, you have two skeins going at once and it's fine. But that would put me running out of both of the first two skeins at similar times. And then I would only have a third skein with nothing to alternate it with. So like, do you split the skeins up somehow so that the, it's more evenly split? Or like the last skein, do you just like cut that one in half and alternate it with itself? Or I don't know, like what what's the correct way to do this? Because I've literally just never done it before. And so I don't have any like jumping off point. And I just want this sweater to look as uh, rainbowy and fantastic as possible. So I really want to do the yarn justice by uh, handling it in the correct way. The um, Yauza I'm not as worried about because it is more of a tonal yarn. So I'll probably, when I switch skeins on this to the other one, I'll just alternate for like an inch or so, so that there's not a hard line. But I'm really only planning on alternating the mohairs for the most part, which, you know, let me know if that's also the right way to do this. That's what makes sense to me. But this is not my expertise. I've never done this before. So I would absolutely love some insight. So please let me know down in the comments. Um, that would be a massive help. But either way, I just feel like this is going to be amazing. I've actually been calling this uh, my my party again. So it's my party cardigan. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm so, I love it so much. It's so good. <laughs> Both these yarns, they're so soft. Like this is going to be amazing. Uh, one thing is this, uh, this pattern calls for a US 8 needle and I got gauge on a US 7, so I'm knitting on a slightly smaller needle. Um, and then the band on this one is a one by one rib band and it is knit um, as you knit the rest of the sweater. So you don't have to pick up separate stitches for the button band along the way, which should be really nice and probably is a nice stepping off point for my very first sweater. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'm really intrigued by the construction and, you know, excited to learn how to knit something new that I've never knit before. So this will also be going to Japan with me. But yeah, so that is my other work in progress. And that is all that I'm currently working on right now. I do have one more acquisition. So when I went to knit night, um, I couldn't resist getting another skein of yarn. So a little bit of context in my last uh, episode, I showed these two yarns and I was talking about how I wanted to knit something striped in these, but I wasn't sure what, um, and these are both uh, Miss Babs Killington, uh, which is a DK yarn. It's 85% Polworth wool and 15% Tessa silk. Uh, and I have one in the color Russet and one in the color old gold. And I have 350 yards of each, which is a lot, but like sort of an awkward amount, kinda. And I was asking people what I should knit with this because I wasn't 100% sure. So yeah, someone in the comments mentioned the coloring book Raglan by Amy Schur. And I was intrigued, so I looked it up and I'm pretty sure that's it. That is what I would like to knit with these two skeins of yarn. It just looks like such a fun pattern and I'm just think it's pretty much, it's not exactly what I was picturing. Like in my head, I was picturing something V-neck and blah, 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 blah. But when I looked at it, I was like, yes, I love that. That's gonna be fantastic. Like new vision, I love this so much. And so my plan is big chunky stripes with these guys. Um, and then I was like, you know, it would be amazing. Is a contrasting like collar um and like hemlines in like 
a teal color. <laughs> Be a little wild color choice, but I think it would look really, really cool in that pattern. And so when I was at my local yarn store, I picked up this guy. So this is by Acadia. No, this is the Fiberco Acadia. Acadia is the yarn type, uh, the yarn base. And this is 60% wool, 20% alpaca, and 20% silk. Um, does it say the color name? And this is on the color Thunder Bay. And I just think the three of these together is really cool. I really, really like that. I think that's such a cool combination. And I think it'll look great. It will take a little bit of um, adjusting of the coloring book raglan pattern, because that is knit, uh, that is written for worsted weight yarn, and these are all DK. Um, but I'm, I've seen a couple of projects where people made those changes and they're projects look great so I think I should be able to do that um, and it shouldn't be a problem so my vision is there's a version of the pattern with like kind of half sleeves that are a little wider around the arm and that's the that is the style that I'm looking at doing I think it looks really nice and yeah so that's my my other acquisition is this little guy just to round out this trio and yeah, very excited about it. So thank you for the suggestion for the coloring book raglan. I think it's fantastic. I am pretty much completely set on it. I think it's great. So yeah, that's that. And with that, I'm pretty sure that is everything I have for you guys today. So lots of whips right now. Um, as of tomorrow, I will have four whips going, <laughs> which is you know, and three of them are garments and one's a blanket. Like I have no small whips. So be busy, busy knitting. Um, but yeah, and also just, I also 100% plan to take my ranunculus with me to Japan. I think it's going to be in the 80s there. It should be lovely weather. And yeah, I think this is going to be perfect. So I will be showcasing my knitting on my journeys, which is really exciting. But with that, that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll be back in two weeks with another podcast episode. I will not be posting anything next week while we're in Japan. I'm just going to take a week off and enjoy my time with my husband and my friends. And yeah, I'll catch up with you guys two Sundays from now. And I'm looking forward to hopefully having lots of updates for you. So with that, I'll see you in the next one. Happy knitting. Bye.